Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group Assistance Sessions, putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Understanding God's Love and Laws group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Enforcing Love and Truth Session 4 presentation, Jesus creates the correct environment for gaining an education in love by removing participants whom he feels are not addressing gender-based emotional issues caused by a lack of sincere desire for love, truth, and self-awareness. Recorded on the 23rd of November, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Last one of these. <laughs> cool if you're going to shut down. And these are essential parts of trying to clean up their act. All right, so this one applies to one person as well. Alex, it's you. Yep, you want to have the mic with you? Yeah, I'm happy for you to ask questions, but not too many because I've already... <laughs> oh, I felt it was me. Yeah. Um, if I can just uh, mention to you a few things that are really important for you before you go away. Um, I feel there's five things in particular that you're def definitely not changing on. You're aware of them, so that's great. That's the only reason why you've been here for the first three days, in fact. Otherwise, I probably would have removed you the first night. Um, but you're aware of these issues, um, but you don't treat them very seriously in terms of solving them or resolving them. So if I can just list them for you, just to, and you can go back over this recording to check, check it out. The first one is your extreme level of arrogance. It is still hardly un unchanged at all. And uh, you're, it's that way with everybody. Um, it's not just with me, but it's just with pretty much everybody you interact with that, I observe, that I've observed in the group. The second thing is this uh, power and dominance, sexual power and dominance over women. You have some male spirits with you, obviously, who, who want you to engage in that. And if, if you can't get sexual power and dominance over a woman, you're basically not interested in her at all. You just completely dismiss her as if she's valueless or worthless. So that's an issue I feel that's been outstanding for a long time. We've talked to you about that before. All of these issues I've talked to you about before. Um, the third one is more to do with your... Um, and, and the third issue probably is the most serious issue in my opinion, and that is the way in which you, in conversation and in demeanour, pull down the worth of other people who already have a low sense of their own worth. It's like... It's like you pick on a person who has a low sense of their own worth and then you do things with them in interactions that actually make them feel even worse. And, and you come away from that quite like empowered yourself. Like this. So there's a very heavy addiction there for doing that. The, probably the most concerning thing though is the fact that you enjoy sin. It's like... Uh, it's, Something that I feel is the most concerning thing, to be honest, is, is this way in which you enjoy these sins, you know, the way that you get a lot of feedback, you, you get a lot of things for yourself from them. But, but honestly, like I'm really concerned about you, to be honest. I feel that you've had some awakenings in terms of right at the beginning when I met you, you basically were pretty clueless about what was happening and how much spirit influence you're under and so forth. But... But now you're pretty aware, so that's an improvement, like you're not in <coughs> denial anymore. But it's like you enjoy the sin so much that you just can't, you won't stop it. And my concern for you, mate, is that, man, it might be hundreds of years' time when you start st thinking about stopping it, rather than actually starting to address it as soon as you possibly can as a priority. And I just feel that you're not placing a priority on it, even though you know that these are problems. Does that make sense? On each yeah. of those things. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I've been like journaling about it in the morning and actually feeling about some of the heaviness of this stuff or the truth of it. Yeah, I know. You actually believe you're improving with the issues, but I don't observe the improvement. Um, and, and the people... I basically feel I have to remove you from the group to protect the other people in the group, to be frank. Uh, f to protect them, just uh, as a way of protecting them from you. Because there is this really strong 
desire you have to just pull down the worth of people, particularly you focus particularly on the people who already have a poor sense of their own worth, and then you, you pull them down even further through your attitude, your actions, your words, and it's quite insidious, and many of them come away thinking, like I can feel them coming away thinking, what just happened to me? Something happened to me, but I don't know what it was, but what just happened? I've got no idea, they, because they don't see that actually it's quite an abusive thing that you're doing with them. And I feel you don't see it either, really. Um, and I, I feel that's, you know, there's a fair bit of work to do there in, in those, particularly those four things that I've mentioned to you. So, so we'd like you to leave as soon as we've finished here with this and before we move on. Um, I feel we've given you plenty, again, plenty of feedback about these issues over the years, but there's still this feeling of arrogance in you that basically says it doesn't apply to me. I can skip over that. It, they're wrong. I can skip over that. And it's fine if you believe I'm wrong, but, uh, but I, I know from the interactions that you have with others how much others get harmed by those interactions. So it's time for us to draw a line there. Make sense? Yeah, cool. Yep. Okay, so that's uh, it for today about enforcing love and truth. That's our last session. We won't be doing any more of these sessions on the last two days. And the main reason why we're not is because we really just want the last two days to remain untainted, untainted with the uh, the feelings that you get whenever we <laughs> whenever we do this as a group you follow me which are really feelings of like you you all get very nervous and and detuned from yourselves um which which still reflects as mary pointed out in her first homework session with you that there's not a strong desire for truth right uh, now with all of these people we've removed the majority of them we've had long conversations with and, and in many cases, many long conversations with about their issues. But the reality is a person who has a strong level of desire for truth, you only ever have to have really one conversation with them if, if, with it, when it's something that they don't or are not aware of. You only really need one conversation. You don't need lots and lots of them. Does that make sense? So that's how in future we're going to measure people's desires we're going to see how many conversations we've had to have a, with you about the same issue. That makes sense. Okay, we'll just have a pause for a second while I switch slides and, and uh, Lena does too, and then we can get started on our presentations this morning.